um, one of the things that I showed before I ended the stream really quickly with the mDesign is this mDesign config, and it's important you see that. Um, because this comes with some very interesting files. Unfortunately, it doesn't have an automatic season switcher, so you would have to open up that uh, control panel, which we now have here on the screen, and you would have to determine which you would want, autumn, winter, hard winter, early spring, or spring, summer. I think for this um, stream, we'll take a look at spring, summer, and then maybe hard winter, and just get an idea between the two, I think. And you can obviously you know, look at the rest on your own, on your own free time if you have it, or if you're gonna get it. Click on Others here. You have Season and Others, which are two tabs on there. Clicking on Others takes you to some more options such as Static Vehicles, Static Aircrafts, and Vehicle Animation. And then you click Save and Exit, and that is it. I'm going to load up my trusty MD902 one more time. And any of those is fine. So we can fly around, and uh, I think the iCal code is UUDD or something, right? That's correct. Okay. And let's change the weather to something else. All right, and then we just gotta wait a minute to load the scenery. Thank you all for coming back on board. Sorry to, uh, to do that. Once again, we're uh, looking at uh, Moscow Demodidovo from M Design. And uh, since I ran over two hours, and YouTube is already now going to break that up into multiple segments, separate videos, there was no point in doing it all for two different projects. So uh, I had to do a quick stop and restart. So... Uh, at least this one, I know for sure I'll try to keep it under two hours so you can see at least this part as one video. We're now loading. I'm going to grab some water here and I'll be right back. Oh no! I have to run vector! Crap. Let me just make sure the airport is there. Let me just slew up. Yeah, it's there. I got to run vector. Ah, son of a gun. All right, well, let's kill the simulator. Ugh. All right. Where's Vector? Vector, 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 here you are. Vector Configurator. All right, uh, we need Airport Elevation Corrections and Disable UUDD, there it is. Click on that, Disable. Now it should show up here, UUDD, and now it's on that list. Click Apply, and a little color bar should run across the screen there any minute now. Any minute now. Come on. There we go. All right. Exit. All right. I just have to bring up prepared one more time. My apologies. It's it's like Russian roulette with that. No pun intended since we're looking at Russian airports. But some airports are really affected by the uh, vector tool and some aren't. And I just don't know it until after I jump in. So uh, we're loading up prepared one more time. Sorry about that. Give me just one quick second. And uh, yeah, Peloto says Vector's always joking. <laughs> Give me one second to grab some water and I'll be right back. That loaded quickly. Okay. Let's go back to my little trusty 902 by Nimeth, which is a terrific helicopter, by the way. If you happen to be a fan of helicopters, I think that's one of the best ones that are out there. It's got some excellent flight dynamics, too. Okay. Oh, okay, that'll work. Okay, and airport is uniform, uniform, delta, delta. And let's use one of these Orbix themes. That'll work. All right, sorry about that. <clears throat> oh. 
A lot of news today. It's funny. I, w I started complaining uh, in the other stream how there was no news this week, and then I guess all the developers must have heard because then <clears throat> looks like we just got flooded with news the last three days. Um, Coronado with the uh, with the Navgraph implementation on the Proline 21 with the uh, Hawker, and then there's uh, Alabeo with the GTN 750 integration from Flight One. Which will run in P3D V2. A guy named Max says it won't run in V2. It is compatible with V2 Max. And uh, complaint that Flight One's going to double charge you to use their software FSX in P3D. Well, I don't. Uh, I don't use FSX, so I guess that don't bother me none. I ain't worried about that, man. There ain't no problem with me. I don't use FSX anyway. Okay. All right. And uh, a lot of people on the blog today. Wow, 9,000 page views, and we're only uh, a little more than midway through the day. All right, so here we go. Looking at uh, M Design Moscow Shimera. Oh, um, shit. Demodi Dovo, excuse me. And let's go full screen. And uh, our performance counter, as always, is in the upper left hand side of the screen, of your screen. The screen, a screen, whatever screen. And so far, ground textures look nice. Frame counters, 59s and 60s, which is about the same uh, for Shamir Chievo. I know I'm butchering the name of that, aren't I? Yes, I am. All right, let's go ahead and take off and look at the Modi Dovo. In fact, we were using, there was another uh, version that I have for FS9 that wasn't bad. wasn't great, but wasn't bad. But I think this time around, uh, I think this team has really done a kick-ass job from what I understand. So now we're going to get to see, you're going to get to see firsthand. In fact, we're going to see it together for the first time. So let's get underway. Ground textures here look fairly crisp. Some nice looking uh, grass textures here. Looks like we've got another uh, famous illusion hanging out over here on the side. In parking mode, is this a, uh, what is this? This looks like a, this is a static, right? Is that a static? I would, I would say yes, yeah, since the engines are covered. Very nice looking static model there. And a little tow bar there on the ground too. Nice. I'm sure if you're flying a heavy, you'll, your wingspan will clear that airplane sitting there. Hope so. So far I'm liking the ground textures. Looking very nice. And once again, we are looking at Orbix FTX Global Vector and open LC lots of trees my goodness that's a lot of trees but nevertheless it doesn't seem to be having too much of an effect on frame so that's a good thing look at the quality of the groundwork they're very nice M Design I've never heard of M Design and to my knowledge this is the first thing they've ever done now I don't know if this is a team of existing uh, flight simulation developers or a developer maybe that developed something under a previous name before or if this really is just a true first attempt I don't know and maybe um, some of you guys might be able to correct me I have actually no clue and uh, I'm actually not seeing any new comments so I'm wondering if I need to refresh my screen I probably do let me refresh my screen because I'm not seeing any new comments pop up since I turned off the stream So let me just make sure because I don't want to miss any of your comments. Oh, I got to sit through an ad. For some reason, uh, Chrome with all my extensions uh, doesn't show me how many people are viewing. So as a result, I have to kind of go with Internet Explorer. I know, throw up. Oh. Sorry, I'm just spinning circles here until the doggone computer comes back on. 
All right, Slayer says hi. So that's the first one that I have, the first chat. So um, anything before that? Um, I miss anything. Chemo says chat is quiet, so maybe that's the case. And Chemo and Slayer, welcome aboard. Slayer, by the way, I think I just saw your comment on Air Daily X. I think I just published that. All right. So anyway, if you are just joining me, joining us all, um, I think we're like three hours into the stream now. We were looking at uh, JB Tisky Designs Moscow Shemeritievo, and uh, I think we, we give it uh, nine and a half stars out of ten. The only issue that we really found with that was just some uh, areas where low-resolution photo terrain was used where I think hand-drawn uh, aprons and things should have been used. But other than that, it's a beautiful, wonderful, terrific airport. And I love it. Um, so that was the only thing negative we could come out of that. Everything else was done very well. So today is Moscow Day. And uh, <clears throat> and uh, so now we're over at M Design de Modidovo. And checking out some of these cool uh, Aeroflot retired aircraft uh, sitting around the airfield. I'm assuming these uh, aircraft are retired anyway. This guy with no engines. And just taking a look at the various airplanes here. Hopefully the stream is running okay, okay this time. I know earlier there was some issues. I see Andre's back. There we go. Gombo. Thank you, guys. Uh, I know earlier there were some issues with uh, the stream. Hopefully the stream has... Uh, Picked up a little bit now and is running a little bit better. Knock on wood. And here we have some uh, airport. It looks like an airport uh, logistics or office building here in the middle of the airfield along with the fuel tanks. Some nice environmental reflections here. Some nice texture work here. I don't know anything about these guys in design, but man, the quality is looking very good. I'm, I'm actually quite impressed. Some very nice looking texture work here. I'm trying to see if I can get up a little bit closer to this building. So far, so good. And I'm assuming, like I said earlier, I'm assuming this is a new development team. And so far, the quality looks quite nice. We've got the fuel tanks, some warehouses. Any other miscellaneous buildings may be used for maintenance, for maintaining the uh, service vehicles, maybe. Look at the quality of that brick, huh? Very nice. That is some nice, some very nice texture work, I have to say. I'm, I'm, I gotta say, I'm quite impressed. <laughs> I'm actually quite impressed with what I'm seeing here. Take a look at some of these service vehicles out here. A couple of yellow trucks there, which are uh, typical Russian uh, older vehicles there. There's a Scania and some Volvo uh, trucks here, fueling, refueling trucks. And uh, with the, the uh, Demodi Dovo logo as well as some de-icing uh, vehicles as well. That looks very nice. Oh, I'm moving a little bit fast here. In Twitch, whenever I move too fast, things tend to uh, get pixelated in the stream. So sorry, I'm, let me try to slow things down here. Um, nice texture work on the building here. Obviously, the, uh, the glass, I don't know if that's broken glass or what, but the same image was used. But uh, anyway, good looking building there. This looks like a Skoda. Is this a Skoda? Or a Renault. Let me see. What's the logo on back of this car here? As if anyone cares. Ah! I missed it. It looks like it was Renault. The Renault logo. I'm not sure. Some, some nice tree placements. Nice lighting towers. And the wife is texting, so give me a second here.
Alright, sorry about that. That's, uh... Oh! Ah! Sorry. And here are some of our animated vehicles. Perfect timing. Nice looking vehicles. And so far, it looks like our uh, performance is still looking quite nice. So it looks like we have some nice animated vehicles here. I think that is Renault, isn't it? I want to say that is. Ooh, and some buses here too. Nice. Nice air looking airfield buses animated as well. I doubt they'll stop for your aircraft when you pass in front of them, but they do look quite nice. And off in the distance there looks like the de-icing areas. Looks like another uh, illusion there on the ramp. Or is that a two-plove? I think that's a two-plove, isn't it? Very impressive looking ground textures. And uh, it looks like the... Uh, it's a seamless transition to uh, open LC from Orbix, but we'll we'll get to that in a little bit. Oh, Skoda. Okay, so it's a checkmate Skoda. They make very nice cars, by the way, Skoda. I think the only reason why we don't get them here in the states is because it would be a competition with Volkswagen, and uh, I don't think. Uh, I don't think they would want that, but they make really nice cars, Skoda. I got a chance to drive one, actually, uh, when I visited Prague a few years ago. Good quality. It actually feels, it was a diesel engine, but it basically had the same feel as a, as a typical, in fact, it was basically the Skoda version of a Passat. Now, the car that I drive is a Passat, so when I travel abroad, sometimes I like to just buy, you know, drive the car that I already have since I'm already familiar with it. And I have a nice six-speed Passat. So the car that I actually drove there was the the Skoda version of a VW Passat. I don't know what it's. I couldn't remember what it was called though. But I was like, yeah, that looks like my car. <laughs> you know, it's funny because there are some differences, and it's like it is, but it's not. But it is. But then you get inside, and it's like everything looks the same except some logos are different. <laughs> so, but uh, anyway, Skoda. Yeah, they make nice cars. And heading over to, uh, and can someone just let me know if the um, the stream is coming through okay? It's not, you know, no buffering or uh, issues with uh, pixelation or anything. I hope not. Taking a look now over at the sort of logistics area here. Some more fuel tanks. Looks like random um, office buildings and so on. Wow, today's a long stream, isn't it? Keeping you guys entertained on a Sunday afternoon. Uh, let's see here. And uh, moseying over into the hangars. Good looking hangars. The texture quality here is looking very good. To be honest. I wish I could have something. Usually right now is the part where I'm talking about how the developer first got their start. Or how I first found out about them and all that nonsense. Um, I can't really say anything because I don't know anything about M Design. I know nothing about them, other than the fact that so far they seem to have done a stellar job with uh, with this product. That's all I can really say. We could try to do story time with DeAndre, but then I'd have to think of a story. I already did the one about towing in the 747 and then disconnecting the tow bar and then chasing it out into the alley. That was a fun story. As it as the 747 dragged me along with it, <laughs> that was some good times, man. I tell you, I have to think of some more stories. All right, heading on over here to uh, some other hangars, and it looks like there's an airplane in there too. Let's get up close on this texture work and take a look. And uh, spe special thanks to uh, Dom Mason, who uh, provided these uh, products for me. For those of you who know Dom, he is the founder of Air Daily X. No longer a part of it, but nevertheless, he's still very, very, very helpful. Especially when it comes to me doing product tests and stuff like that. So, 
Dom is terrific guy. So look at these textures, man. This looks very nice. I gotta, I gotta say, I think I'm looking at a new, uh, a new favorite, a new developer to add to my favorites list. This, everything that I've seen so far, I've been very, very impressed with. Very impressed. Look at the quality of that photo reel. I mean, this is JV Tisky design kind of stuff. Stan, are you sure this ain't you? I know he's probably he's probably not watching now, but he'll watch it later. Yeah, this is really nice. Nice work. Sorry, but I'm very detailed oriented when it comes to my simulator, so um, I really like to get in close and look at the quality of work. And uh, wow, this hanger just looks very nice. In fact, I see some other buildings outside the airport perimeter as well. Should probably take a look at here. Just some random, look like random. Oh, crap! <laughs> There's another building here. Oops! Where did you come from? Nice office building. Very nice. Look at the quality of that work. I'm sounding like a fanboy right now, and it's because, yeah, I think I've, I'm a fan of this developer now. I mean, I just everywhere I look, the textures are looking uh, very, very, very impressive. Very impressive. I almost want to think this is the same guy who did uh, Yekaterinburg and who's working on, uh, currently working on... Uh, What's that airport that I was just talking about? St. Petersburg and all that. I don't think it's him. But um, this is certainly uh, up with his level of quality, too. I mean, the quality here is just very nice. This is the Transaero headquarters, is it? If you fly Transaero to LAX, be careful with your checked luggage. Every time I pass through... Um, it, it seems like they always leave so many bags behind from their flights and they're like bags that were checked locally at the ticket counter. That's just so weird about Transaero. It's like, oh my God, could you imagine? It's not even a bag from another airline connection. It's like you checked it in at the counter and then they didn't, and then they left it behind. Oh, that's got to be infuriating. Anyway, they don't look like they're too good with that sort of thing, but... Let's head on over back to this hangar, which is looking very nice. Here's another. I gotta say, these are some of the best uh, static models I think I've seen. These are some very nice looking statics here. There's another one there in the hangar. Very nice modeling with the hangar, too, on the inside. You can see some of that brick in there. Some trailers, maintenance trailers there. And who's this guy? So very nice looking static aircraft here. And looks like we have a little Looks like an advertisement on the uh, wall here. It's probably all in Cyrillic, so. Quite naturally. Very good looking hangar. I'm impressed here. Alright, let's head on back out. And here we are at the cargo area. Again, each each of these buildings, I mean, there are some developers where... Ooh. <laughs> Women fighting over shoes, question mark? <laughs> Sorry. Um, <laughs> there's some sort of women's expo going on at uh, the uh, L.A. Convention Center in... 
my wife is there and she's saying the place is crazy i'm like are women there like fighting over like shoes or bras and stuff like what's going on at that place anyway she's there representing her company anyhow it's some de some developers have an, have a tendency to um get a little bit i don't want to say lazy but when it comes to like buildings that are oh women fighting over anything <laughs> oh wow it must be crazy hang on Please send pictures. Okay. Uh, oops. Um, I don't want to say lazy, but you know, when it comes to buildings that maybe aren't really all that important, sometimes those buildings will have, you know, they won't look as good as, say, the quality on the terminal models and all that stuff. But here, every single building that I found so far, whether it's airfield or not, it seems like it's just gotten the full treatment. I mean, everything just seems to have gotten the full quality treatment. I am, I, am, I am very impressed. There's definitely a lot of work and effort that's gone in here. And we haven't even gotten to the terminal yet. Always leave that part for last because that's the part that most of you want to see. And then as soon as you see it, you all will just sign out and then I'll be talking to myself. So I make you wait for that because I'm an asshole. No, I'm kidding. But um, look at the parking lot. Very nice. We have parking lot lines. Cars are neatly you know, placed in their various parking lot lines here. Nice fences. Come on, I, I gotta find something wrong with this. I'm gonna find something wrong with this product. I'll find something. I'm gonna look nice and hard. I'm gonna find some way to rip this apart. Oh, what the hell? And there it was! <laughs> well, speaking of which, what the, I'm like, wait. Is this a, a demo mode from FSDT or Flight Beam? No, 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 it's not. Everything just disappeared there. That was so funny. I swear there was like a ghost right here and said, okay, I'm going to show you something right now. And then everything disappeared. That was funny. Did you guys see that? Look at this. He even went through the trouble of making the, uh, the ticket machines and all that for the parking lot. I'm, I'm impressed. I mean, that's, that's good, good attention to detail here. This is kind of what I wanted to see with, uh, see with Shemera Tievo. Um, you know, this level of quality for the parking lots. This is what I'm talking about. I am, I am very, very impressed. How many times am I going to say that? I'm going to start getting annoying in a minute. So I like the trees. Very nice. Very nice. Ground equipment, containers, all neatly stacked. This way, you go to L.A. and you see containers. They're just thrown all over the damn place. It's, everything here is just so neat. God damn, I don't think I've seen an airport so neat with the damn containers. I, it's probably not like that in real life. They probably just did that here for the uh, for the scenery. They stacked it so neatly. But nevertheless, I mean, nice, nice, uh, nice quality on the uh, on all of the uh, GSE UL, unit load devices and all that good stuff. Some good vehicle animations. I wonder if this thing turns. I'm going to follow this guy for a second. How many is he pulling? One, two, three, four, five, six. That's a lot. Usually the maximum you can you should pull is five. <clears throat> I want to see if he turns a corner. If the whole thing just turns like a bus or if those things will turn independently. Because I just want to see. Oh, look at that. They turn independently. That takes some effort to animate that like that. He's going to park next to this, this line here, huh? Wow, that's very nice. Nice fire truck. I guess that's the firehouse there. It's kind of modest, isn't it? I really like the light towers here, too. I have to be honest. This, this airport is turning out to be far better than I thought it would. It's turning out to be far better than I thought it would. I am, like, really going crazy here. I'm like a little schoolgirl. <laughs> I mean, the ground textures. And even in the areas where it's like, this could have been like photoreal, but at least it was darkened and not too bright. So at least it gives a feeling that it's pavement. You know, I still get a feeling that it's pavement. So that's not bad. Oh, he actually went inside that building. Oh, crap, I'm going to go in after him. Hang on. Come on, come on. Go, 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 I'm going to see what he's doing in that building. Was that an open door that he went through?
Oh, what? It is open, huh? Oh, he's coming back out. Check that out. What's going on in there? I know this is ridiculous, but I just want to see anyway. I guess he came in and turned around and came back out. Yeah. All right. Nice. So he had somewhere to go. Very well done. All right. Let's head on over. Demodi Dovo is not particularly a very big airport, is it? It seems smaller than its counterpart on the other side of Moscow. All right, let's get around to the main terminal. Let's go airside first, shall we? Look how everything is just so neatly stacked. Look at that. I just wanted to swing around here real quick. Look how, how nicely, I mean, the GSC is very nicely modeled. Everything's neatly parked. Great looking ground textures, roof textures. I haven't found anything wrong yet. I'm really digging this airport. This is really nice. Oh, we got a train. And that train wasn't there earlier. Did you guys see that train earlier? I don't remember seeing that train when I came around. We're going to find out if he's animated too in a minute. In the meantime, got some nice environmental reflections on the glass here. Again, the parking lot areas in front of the airport done nicely. You've got like little cement uh, like uh, partitions here. See, this is how it's supposed to look in front of an airport. This is how it should look. Damn, these guys did a good job. Let's take a look at uh, the, the image they used here on the terminal building. Looks very nice. Got some nice cars there. And even a different uh, different textures. You have a different texture for the road and a different texture for the footpath. And you even have signs for a taxi, taxi in Cyrillic, and uh, for the the crosswalk. Oh wow, my God, I am really impressed. You know, running Air Daily X. I've said it many times before, the thing that's the best part about it, after having followed products for so many times, followed projects for so many times, is when they finally get released, and I kind of already have an idea of what to expect quality-wise because I've been following it for so long, certain airports, aircraft, and stuff like that, but then every now and then something comes along and it just totally takes me off guard, and I'm like, oh my god, this is great, okay, this is one of those moments. This was not an airport I was looking forward to. It was like I was thinking, um, you know, uh, it's another another developer. I love I love when they add billboards. That's always a great thing. The elephants pissing on the uh, the VW uh, whatever that is. And uh, I mean, so every now and then it's like I just get caught off guard, and I wasn't expecting much from this product. I really wasn't because I'm like, it's a new developer. You know, I'm not going to hold anything against them. Maybe it's good, maybe it's not. But nevertheless, I don't. You know, I don't approach it with like Fly Tampa where I've got expectations or Flight Beam where I've got expectations, you know. So when I approach it and I've got no real expectations and then it turns out to be so good, that's like that's like always the hidden, you know, the hidden treat um, is the stuff that I don't expect. You know, and there's a lot of attention to detail here and this is definitely one of those moments for me. Um, this is this is a treat for me. And I think I've had a couple of treats already this year, so this one definitely adds to it. Look at that. S7 Airlines and One World Alliance there looks like uh, on a hotel. Their ad advertisement. Gosh, a lot of good attention to detail went into this. And that's in Cyrillic. I'm assuming that's a hotel. but don't know the name of it. So if this is a Russian-based team, I'm not really sure, but I really hope we see more from them in the future. I really want to see more from this team. 
you know, something tells me that the, because the work is as good as it is, something tells me that these guys have done work before in other projects and they just made up the name M Design for Moscow Design or something maybe. And then maybe they'll release something else or, you know, there's sometimes, they're, oh, the train is gone. Shit, I missed my train. Now what do I do? Uh, <laughs> Um, I, I'm assuming you, I, there are some cases where you get you get some developers like I know personally of cases where they're developers of different companies of known companies and they will work together on certain projects for a certain particular projects and then you know and then they go their separate ways and um, so I don't know if that could have be, been a case here because this looks too good for a first timer this looks way too good for a first timer I want to go look for that train hang on Oh, let's see how far this goes. They didn't add the tracks. That kind of sucks, but it's all good. Or the railway crossing lines. Ooh, here's another ad. That's for a smart car. Ooh, there's a lot of ads on the roads here. Look at that. Is there an ad behind you? Let's see. More ads leading up to the airport. Ooh, airport signage. VIP parking, short-term parking. Cool. I love billboard ads. That's pretty great. There's the elephant pissing on the tour egg or whatever that was. Some hot chick doing something or other. What kind of car is this? This is a... Is that a Citroen? No, that's a Toyota. No, that is a... I don't know what. I don't know what logo that is. What is that? Tigo? Yeah, it's a Russian car? I've never heard of that. What do we got over here? Oh, ho, 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 ho. is this a hotel ad? What is this? What What is he doing? What the hell is he doing? <laughs> I don't read Cyrillic, but there's only so many ways I can interpret what the hell's going on right here in this ad. <laughs> it's like a person without a dirty mind could assume he's a dentist, maybe. But uh, I don't think he's denting on her. He's doing something else. <laughs> okay, moving along. And we have here uh, Russian housing blocks. Let's see, there's another ad down here. Look this way. It's like another road. It looks like a gas station. Oh, that was pretty cool how they did that. It looks like the uh, the gas station, the, the, the gas nozzle coming up out of the ground as part of the pole. It looks like they tried to do that. Rammstein! Holy crap! These guys must be fans of Rammstein, huh? I used to listen to these guys like when I was in high school. We are talking like 16, 17 years ago. Rammstein. Beats to the spirit of the shides, even leaving organ shit and talking. <laughs> That's horrible that I remember that, by the way. <laughs> Rammstein, holy crap, that was from forever ago. And then there's that, what's that, Firefly? Dunch, 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 da da dunch. Oh, there comes a train. Dun, 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 Firefly. Bang, bang. Anyway, I don't listen to them anymore, but I was fans of them in Prodigy and all that crap back in high school. All right, let's wait for the train to catch up with us, and we'll follow him back to the airport. Come on, train. I know I saw him. What did he did he stop at a stop sign or what? Or at a at a at a? Uh, oh, there he is. Cool, that's a good looking train too. Ah! Shoot. I have to be careful when I go to zero, uh, whenever I go to zero airspeed, because then I lose control. All right. 
right? We got the train. This is like, um, what's that the, the, from Mission Impossible? Dunch, dunch, dun, dun, dunch, dunch, dun, dun, dunch, dunch, dun, dun, dunch, dun, 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 Although this is not exactly the TGV, so we're not going too fast, are we? So now you guys see what I really do when I'm not streaming and I'm just screwing around. That's a nice uh, looking model train there. I wonder how far it goes. I should try to follow it like all the way to the end, but... I'll let you guys do that on your own time. I'm sure that you... Ha I have to leave something for you guys to explore. I haven't gotten to your comments in a minute here, so I'll, I'll do that as soon as we get back to the station here. Ah, oops. Get the train again. I'm a sucker for crap like this. <laughs> That's a long train. Holy crap. There it goes. Very nice. Well, that was a nice touch. Alright, let me put my helicopter down here in the parking lot, and let me try to get to some of your comments. I don't know if you guys are asking any questions or anything. Actually, this is probably not hard, and I don't think I can land on this, can I? Am I going to sink through it? Let's see. I probably am. Yeah, that's not hard. Alright, let me land. I'll land over here in front of the... I don't hit the tree. There we go. We should be able to land right here. All right, take a quick look at some comments. Sorry, it took me a minute. I kind of lost myself here in this honeymoon that I'm having with this airport that I'm discovering, along with you guys. Uh, T7 Flyer says he, he misses the GeoWinder type of airports. I do. GeoWinder, I think that was, um, uh, what is his name? He works for Orbix now. GeoWinder had some good stuff for their day. They had really, really good stuff for their day. Um, and it's it's kind of sad because I only discovered GeoWinder, you know, sometime in the last couple of years, and they've been around a lot longer than that. But I had barely just discovered them, and by the time I did, I was, you know, already on my you ready to make my exit out of uh, FS9. Andre says they look like energy services offices. That was pretty further up. Uh, let's see. And Piloto says, despite some textures, everything is very nice looking. I like the attention to details. Little objects are perfect. Uh-oh, looks like T7 is having some stutter issues. Okay, cool. So it was a browser. If you have stutter issues or performance issues with the stream, guys, I guess reset your browser. Apparently that helps. If you use Google Chrome, you can add an extension to kill the ads, I guess. Uh, let's see. And Andre points out that the glass is 3D. Um, which they did. I guess what they did is they took the glass and then they put the image behind the glass so that you don't look at just like a matte image. Matte spelled M-A-T-T-E. Uh, so you do get that gloss and shine and you actually do get, you know, simulated glass, which is a good trade-off, especially if you're going to go with photo reel and not internal modeling. I think that's a perfect trade-off and I think these guys have, have hit, it, hit, it, hit it spot on. If, uh, that is if you're not going to do internal modeling, so... And Pratt says he's jealous he can't run P3D without having crazy erratic FPS issues. I know there's this company down in Florida called Jetline Systems. If you give them a call, they might be able to be able to get you something uh, that would pretty much ensure you never have another problem. 
T7 Fire says that was a dentist ad where the guy looked like he was doing more than fixing her teeth. <laughs> and Go Pilot, welcome aboard. He's saying, can you show the airport? Just came to the channel. Well, yes, we've seen most of it. We're getting ready to get to the main terminal, which we're saving for last. <clears throat> but welcome to our stream. Piloto says, I don't see a dentist. I didn't see a dentist either, even though I knew that's what it must be. He might be denting her, but not that way. <laughs> GJI1995, welcome aboard. He says, a question. I really want to switch to P3EV2, but I don't, I don't have credit cards since it's not very usual to have one in Holland. Do you maybe know if there's a different type of, of method of paying? No, but you don't need a credit card. I mean, you can use your bank ATM card, um, and then there are some companies that have, like, temporary prepaid cards. But uh, Lockheed Martin does not offer, unfortunately, any PayPal options or anything else. It's, it is, um, uh, you do have to use your card, but you don't have to use a credit card per se. So if you have a, a typical bank card or prepaid card, um, those all should work. So, um, but yeah, there is no other method, uh, GJI 1995. And Andre says, a Rammstein concert billboard. Now I have to buy this. <laughs> Idy says, I'm actually good at this, huh? <laughs> Um, okay, what else do we have here? And then, of course, because you're in Europe, you may have more options um, in terms of the type of cards you can probably obtain um, in terms of getting it. So I really don't know. But um, I'm sure some, some others in Europe might be able to help you. GoPilot, welcome aboard. Uh, let's see. And GoPilot says, switch to P3V2 on Friday, and I really recommend getting it. Getting 20 frames per second more than FSX at the lowest. I am... So happy to hear that. I've been peddling P3D like drugs. <laughs> hey, hey, man. Hey, come here, come here, come here. Hey, you want to you wanna buy some P3D, man? It's really good. Good performance, man. You're going to be seeing shadows and all kinds of shit, man. You're going to love it. Yeah, that's me. I'm a, I'm a, I love P3D. And I just, I can't, I can't sing praises enough about it. And um, you know what? Honestly, I have a feeling we probably will see uh, an update to P3D before the, the year is out. So... Um, but yeah, for those of you so far, everyone who's gotten it so far, I've heard just great things. Like there was so much skepticism in the beginning, but now that people are making the transition, they're really starting to see that it is a good platform. And again, you don't have to turn on all these extra features. You can have your, your P3D running pretty much the same way you had FSX set up, but you should be seeing better performance. In fact, um, there is a developer I was talking to earlier today who's now in the process of making that p3d you know migration and all that and he was basically saying now that he has it set up he's so impressed with it you know so i mean it is a terrific platform and i really do recommend it and even if you're not ready to leave your fsx behind run them both in tandem for a while you know warm up to it you know it's absolutely fine but um it is it is a terrific platform it really really is so glad to see that go pilot so welcome to the p3d club sir uh, Andre says, seeing that train when you arrive on final approach to the airport, those are the things that really increase the sense of realism and being there. I absolutely agree with you, Andre. Um, <clears throat> and Piloto says, I'm really liking in design. Uh, let's see. And GJ says, I'm Gerben Lay. Do you remember me? Hmm. No, sorry. All right, let's, uh, anything else about the scenery? Let's see, everybody's talking about the card. Adi says, I will never <laughs> install FSX ever again on my PC. Oh, goodness. I was never a fan of FSX, and that's why I held out for FS9 so long. Remember, folks, I only made the jump from FS9 uh, in January of 2013. January, February, February 2013, and even then I didn't officially make the jump. That's when I was just starting to explore P3D. Back then it was V1.3 or 1.4, whatever it was, and I found that all the issues I had with FSX were just gone in that version. So once V2 came out last year, I'm sorry, 2012, not 2013, 2012, excuse me, January of 2012 was when I, was when I first made the switch. I would say that I stopped using FS9 completely, um, sometime around July, August of last year when I looked up and realized, oh my God, I haven't fired up FS9 in like three or four months. And that's when I just realized I just can't go back. And then I tried to. I tried to go back. I did some flights with my old Captain Sim 757 and stuff, and I realized it's just not the same. I just, I couldn't, I couldn't do it anymore. 
And um, so, yeah, it was about the summer of last year when I was about officially done. And then, uh, of course, Prepared V2 came out in December of last year, November or December. And from there, it was just looking forward. It was just looking forward and no more looking back. So um, I myself, I mean, you could essentially say within the last, you know, year and a half or so, I myself really just made the switch. So um, and I'm not looking back. I love it. Uh, let's see. GoPilot says, I just bought the GTX 980, hoping for good frames per second in FSX, but didn't. So switch to P3D, and I'm not going back. Can't wait for the 777, which will be out in a few weeks, or definitely before the end of the year. Andre says, PT PMDG just said in their latest statement that they're making their P3D versions of their planes ready for 64-bit. When Lockheed Martin upgrades to P3D 64, Andre, do you have a link to that? Is there any way you can give me a link to that? You mean to tell me PMD just leaked officially that Lockheed Martin's working on 64-bit? Oh, my God. I'm going to pee in my pants. And by pee, I don't mean pee. All right. Uh, Adi says, I can't stand FSX disabling arrow. Oh, yeah. I hated that, too, when it disables your arrow desktop. Slayer says there is a fix for that, though. Um, and uh, if you go to airdailyx.net, which is our website, I see there's some new folks here that uh, I haven't seen before. Our website is airdailyx.net, A-I-R-D-A-I-L-Y-X.net. And uh, we have a daily news page there, and we did cover the news um, from uh, PMDG. In fact, let me put it in here for you. So if you have not heard of us or if you haven't visited our website, please do take a moment to visit our website. Um, and we did cover that news, but th there was some updates from... Um, PMDG after uh, that initial news release that I put up there, I think it was yesterday, in terms of pricing and, of course, what Andre just told us about. So um, as far as that goes, um, I will be looking into that um, later today after the stream uh, to see what other news we, might, we may have missed. All right, so I'm still holding you off before I get to that main terminal. Let's look at the last bit of uh, the logistics buildings and random miscellaneous buildings on the airfield. And I do this because I just don't want to leave anything out. I want to make sure that you walk away feeling like you got a thorough presentation. And, uh, and then we'll get to the main terminal. And then we'll go to night lighting. And then, unfortunately, because this scenery particularly uses different... Um, uses an external oh wow this Pinal Pina that's like a Filipino company isn't it I saw this Pinal Pina logo in the um, the Pacific Island Simulations of Manila scenery I think that's a like a, a Filipino company I think anyway um, what was I talking about oh yeah uh, the uh, <clears throat> the uh, add-on manager or the the I forget what you call the thing but anyway um, it uses an external it uses an external season switcher. So um, the only seasons we're going to show, because it has like five season variations, this one right here is spring slash summer, by the way. Uh, they have winter, and then they have hard winter. We're just going to show the hard winter. And then if you get the scenery, you can look at the other ones, because obviously I have to stop the simulator, change it, then restart it, and that gets annoying. So um, <clears throat> I'm only going to show one other season variation. I, I think the hard winter might look most interesting. So now let's finally get to the main air side of the main terminal building. And once again, sorry my AI is not here. I just installed Ice AI and it didn't install to the correct folders. So that's something I'm going to have to look at um, and, and try and work out. So um, once again, all I can do is continue to echo my sentiment in terms of how impressed I am with the quality of the work that was done here by this company called, or development team, called M-Design. And you even have transparent uh, walkways connecting to the jet bridges here too. Which is very nice, very nice touch. I really like the ground textures here. And so far I haven't found anything that I don't like or that I felt could have been improved. No, I, I really, there's really nothing else I can really say about this product. Uh, I'm trying to think, I'm trying to find something, but uh, I'm just not, I'm not getting there. My brain is not getting there. I'm, I'm, I'm really being left with feeling like everything that 
could have been done as well as it could have been done for this product was. And keeping in mind, M Design, for all I know, was a brand new company. There's nothing else listed on Sim Market from these guys. So for all I know, these guys are new. I don't know, but I just know that they've done a terrific job. Ooh, let's get down here. There's like an open area here underneath the terminal. Looks like there's some texturing in there too, huh? All the cars are looking very nice. Everything is looking nice. And Russia is really coming together. So uh, before the end of the year, we're going to have four major Ru uh, Russian airports in payware quality. The Modidovo, Shemiratievo, uh, Yekaterinburg, and then, of course, um, St. Petersburg will be released before the end of this year. And then, of course, there's the airports way out in the far outlying regions of Russia. <clears throat> Uh, both of which are released from Aerosoft. I can't think of their names, but I'm sure one of you guys will punch them in up there for me. Here we have the control tower. Very modest control tower, but <clears throat> seemingly fitting for the, uh, for, the, for the terminal. Got the steps going up there. Very nice. Very good attention to detail here. There's actually a nice, if you go, if you have an iPhone or iPad, I don't know if it's on iPad, but it's on iPhone, and if you pull up um, Demodi Dovo, they have an, uh, an iPhone game that I play when I'm bored. It's an airport game where um, A380s and 737s come in, and you have to rush to refuel them, cater them, board to deboard, you know, give them gate assignments, and then, you know, give them permission to push back, go to the runway. And it's an, it's an app that's sponsored by Demodi Dovo Airport. I'm not sure what the app is called. In fact, let me pull up my iPhone. I'll see if I can tell you what the app is called. That's if I didn't delete it. I don't think I did. When I got the new iPhone, I deleted some stuff. Oh, it's called DME Live. Delta Mike Echo Live. So if you pull up that DME Live, it's a fun little it's a fun little app. So it'll tell you an A380's inbound and you have to make sure because there's only like 3 or 4 A380 gates. And the, the layout is just like the Modi Dovo, like you see here. And uh, you have to make sure because if you don't have an A380 gate available and you put like a 737 there and it has to wait, then I think you lose the game or something. So it's like as soon as you, as soon as you screw up, it's like an ATC game sort of, but except you have to, you know, make, you know, you have to control the catering for each plane, boarding, deboarding. So sometimes you could be handling like 10 planes and you'll forget about a plane. It'll just be sitting there and then like an exclamation point will pop up. and You're like, oh, crap, I forgot about that one. I have to feel that one and all kinds of stuff. So it's a fun little game. So if you have an iPhone, just check out DME Live on the App Store. It's, fun, it's a fun little game if you're bored. DME Live is what it's called. So I am really impressed. Um, in fact, I guess the only areas that they're going to have to lose me is with maybe night textures and maybe, you know, some of the seasonal variations. We're going to find out. Are they still doing construction here? What's this? It looks like maybe they're adding another level or maybe for lounges or something. It looks like a construction zone there taking place. So, yeah, it looks like maybe they're, they're adding another, another section to the airport maybe. I like that glass. Yeah, that's what it looks like they're doing. They're probably adding something else on there. That's what it looks like. Cool. All right, you guys ready for some night lights? Night light. All right, let's take a look at some night lighting here. Uh, let's do the time preview because that's just always fun to play around with that. Here we go. That looks good. Yes, let's apply that night texture. Your screen's gonna go dark for a second. Uh, let's see. See, just checking to look at some comments here. Give me just a moment. Uh, oh, let me scroll up here. Oops, scrolled up too far. 
Oh, thank you, Captain Gombo, for that topic. Let me just open that in a new tab. Thank you for the link. Slayer says, good overview. I'm, uh, I never fight a Russia, but I may be getting this now. Cool. Good to hear, Slayer. Be sure to check out the uh, Shemaritevo airport uh, that I covered earlier as well from JB Tisky Design. Um, as well, I think they both make a perfect pair. Um, and Captain Gamo says, it is anticipated that P3D will be offered in a 64 variation at some point in the future. PMDG will be monitoring the development of the 64 version of P3D in order to manage the process by which we begin offering X64 compatible versions. Uh, excuse me, shit. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> Uh, we begin offering X64 compatible versions of our products for P3D users. Uh, thank you for the excerpts there, gentlemen. Um, we are very hard at work on the conversion of this product line for the new P3D platform while evaluating what will be required so that we can update to X64 when slash if Lockheed Martin releases an X64 version of P3D. I, I think we all believe they will, and I'm fairly confident that they will. In fact, I'm very confident that they will. Uh, it's just a matter of time. Um, but T7 Flyer does state that it doesn't mean P3D is going to X64. It's a belief that we have, and uh, I think it's something that we're all clinging to. It really is. It really is, because we need it. We solely need it. Um, <clears throat> Adi says, small note for everyone. Sometime this year or first quarter 2015, we'll have something. We'll have a working suite of facts for P3D uh, V2 on Windows 8.1 users. I'll update my site, SimTweak, with all the details as soon as that happens. And uh, Pratt is asking, do, do you need any tweaking in P3D? I do not. So the setup that I have here that you see, the only thing I, had, I personally added is the... Um, I didn't even have to add high mem fix. That was already there. It was just the full screen VSync. I had to add that because that wasn't there. Um, <clears throat> and I find that that helped me. But other than that, no, I don't use any hacks, any tweaks at all whatsoever. Someone gave me some, and when I put them in, I found that it slowed things down. It was like a buffer pool fix or something. So I just decided I'm not doing any tweaks. I'll just leave it like this. Um, and and it, that makes me feel comfortable because with FSX, people had to put so many tweaks and so many things and all this and all that, and it's so much stuff to keep up with. And I like that. I don't have any of that. I can just fire it up and fly, and I'm good. So that makes me happen. So I mean, it makes me happy. So a high min fix one is already in there. You don't have to add it. They they already added it in there for you. All right. Anything else? Rolio's back. Yes, this is the Modi Dovo. Almost toward the end. Um, and, and go pilot says I think the grass could be improved a bit on the airfield I think it's fine I think it's just that they could have maybe added some volumetric grass so that's something we could add to the list of you know what could have been added or improved I think the appearance looks fine it just looks like it's all mowed down but yeah certainly some uh, volumetric grass or 3d grass if you want to call it that would have been a nice addition um, I agree with that <clears throat> And Adi is talking about uh, Sim Launcher X, which is um, really cool, by the way. Really, really cool. Uh, Nathan, welcome aboard. Uh, let's see. Anything else? And by the way, my ICE traffic just did not install into P3D, so I'm really going to have to work on that and find out what went wrong, what I did wrong. In fact, I may do it on the live stream and try to see if I can get it working. Uh, let's see. Corsair25, welcome. All right. Anything else? Yeah, and I think I, I did see somewhere that there may be a promotional, you know, not promotional, but maybe some sort of cross upgrade price or something um, for those who have P3 or uh, the, the PMDG products in FSX. All right, so I did find one issue already, and that's that on the air side of the terminal, there are some parts that did not light up. You can see there in the center it's lit, as well as the, uh, the building logo. But, uh, oh, you know what, though? No, maybe, no, 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 no. Maybe that's because this part of the, air, the terminal isn't open yet. And they're doing construction there. Maybe that's what that is, and maybe that's why it's not lit. So maybe maybe there is a reason behind that. But shouldn't I mean I see like here, you can see the photo reel where it's lit, but why not above? I see there's a couple of areas that's kind of lit above, but not fully. I like how the lights light up the parking lot. That's very nice. And there's the Modi Dovo there written in Cyrillic. 
uh, on the building logo, which is uh, nicely lit up there in the night textures. These uh, parking lot lights and uh, ramp lights are very interesting, aren't they? Very interesting uh, how they're lit up. Let's get closer to that. They're really kind of bright, but then when you get up to them, then they kind of dim out a bit, huh? Wow, that's really cool. Look at how they did the, the lighting there. That's very nice. That looks pretty good. Interesting night lighting on the uh, light towers there. Oops, I went to zero again and then my helicopter stalled out. Sorry. Let me just regain control. There we go. So here we have the long-term parking here. Wow, that's interesting how uh, how they did the lighting. It actually, I'm actually pretty impressed with that as well. Here we are, the main terminal. How come this part wasn't lit? Right there. In fact, it looks like there's a lot of construction going on on that upper level on both sides, doesn't it? I guess that explains why it's not lit on the other side is because maybe it's they're they're adding something maybe that would be my guess. <clears throat> they probably could have added some lights on those glass um, catwalks connecting the terminal to the jet bridge. They probably could have added some some night lighting in there too. So definitely photo real imagery there, making up the night lighting on the terminal. And it's and the, and the night lighting is not too dark, so it, it definitely seems bright enough, which is cool. So definitely lots of photoreal imagery here. That's a big moon, huh? Very interesting, those lights. I like it. So definitely looks like there's some, some add-ons. Uh, hopefully when that construction is done in real life, they will come back in and, uh, I guess, correct that or make an update for the simulator, I hope. We hope. So there's your main terminal at night. And look at that. The uh, ground vehicles have a, a light cast in front of them, which looks very good. I love that. Their headlights uh, reflection on the, uh, on the ground there. And here we have all of the uh, surrounding buildings. In fact, I noticed it looks like some housing blocks they added out there. I'm going to fly out there and take a look at those in a minute. I did notice that earlier. I'll make sure to head out there and take a look at that. There's the Transero. Looks like the Transero headquarters there. There's your Transero headquarters. Uh, I'm assuming that's their headquarters. I don't know. I could be wrong, but I'm assuming that is their headquarters. Transera. I don't know why my ice traffic. I gotta figure that out. I like. I really wanted to see all the Russian planes show up. All right. Oh, look at how they did the uh, the hangar. They kind of have that that light glow, that hue in there. Interesting. And there's our friend up there on the wall. I don't know who that is. Did anyone figure that out? That's pretty cool how they did that. So that from afar you can see kind of, you know, the way the the lights are lighting up the term or I'm sorry, the uh, the hangar there at night. That was a fairly nice idea of just backing up here. Ooh, I hit the ground. From a distance, you can kind of see how it how it comes together. That looks pretty neat. 
little stair truck there. Well, look at that road going all the way out there. I think that's what they added. I think that's part of that train where that train's going, I think. That road straight ahead out there. Well, that goes out pretty far. And here we have uh, more of the logistics areas, more hangars, miscellaneous buildings. I'm actually curious about those apartment blocks. Let me just head out there and take a look at those real quick. I just want to see if that's part of the scenery or what that was added there. I'm actually kind of curious. I think they probably added this as part of the scenery, this area out here. Oh, before I do that, let's look at the runway lighting. I'll do that when I come back. Let's go take a look. Yeah, this looks like this was all uh, like custom auto gen and housing blocks added as well. Very nice. Cool. They didn't even have to bother with that, but it's very nice that they did. Some typical Soviet era uh, uh, housing blocks, looks like. There's the airport in the background. Nicely done. All right, let's take a look at that runway approach and lead in uh, lighting. See how that came along. Um, Slayer's asking, does Open LC extend out over this area? Yes, it does. This is the eastern part of Open LC. You have north, south, east, and west, and the east is what covers all the way out to uh, Moscow. They have a map somewhere um, that shows you the full coverage area, but yes, it does. I mean, you could argue argue that, you know, Moscow was not technically Europe, I mean, geographic-wise, but um, they did include it as part of Europe, which is cool. Some nice-looking runway lights. I see uh, we got uh, chase lighting there. And then I have to give a disclaimer. I use Rex for Texture Direct, so my runway lighting has an LED look to it. It looks bright. Some people have said that it looks blue. That's just because the texture that I chose for my Rex Texture Direct, but yours may not necessarily look like that. Sorry, I'm just trying to descend here so we can turn a couple of those red. This is all custom lighting, very impressive, and the lights conform to their light towers. Look at that chase light. That's one of the better ones I think I've seen. Well, oh, I made them all turn red, didn't I? Oops, come on. Oh, there's zero. Zero speed. It's <laughs> Oops. Sorry. Left rudder. Left rudder. Left rudder. There we go. I actually can't see my speed, so I don't know what I'm doing. There we go. Now I can see it. I'm like almost in a hover here. So, yeah, the lights are white, but they do look a little bluish because of, of my own little rec settings. So. But uh, nevertheless, good-looking custom night lighting. It's perfect. Look at that. Look at that chase light. And look at that. They even have the reflection on the ground there of the lights. Damn, I love this airport. <laughs> and look at the lighting from the lights on the green on the left here. Sort of on the grass. How far the lights cast out on the gra grass. There was just a lot of effort that went into this. Look at the lighting on the ground. 
man, this was this this is an icing on the cake for me. I wasn't expecting it to be this good. I really wasn't. There's a team that did this airport, this freeware airport, and I unfortunately I can't think of the airport. Um, you know what? Hang on. What was this airport? It kind of reminds me of this team. Where's the thing? Uh, Windows. It reminds me a little bit of these guys. I can't think of the name of it, but I know I wrote like a little mini review on it. Uh, enter. Uh, where is... Was it First Look or Scenery Reviews? I think it's Scenery Reviews. What was the name of that dog on the airport? It was a nice freeware. And uh, here it is. Ender Sky Scoot Studios, Borsville. There we go. It's on the old one. And it, the, the work is kind of remind me of these guys. Like, I wonder if it's this group and they just got even better with their work. The work kind of reminds me of this one because, I mean, this, these guys, they release this freeware. I don't even know if it's for FSX or if it's just for FS9. But they did such a great job. I was so impressed. And they gave this away for free. And the work kind of reminds me of this. This scenery has been out for a few years now. Um, even I say here, have a closer look. Remember, this is freeware. This is worth a donation. I wrote that. When did I write this article? June 24th, 2012. Okay. It was a long time ago. But man, this is an FS9, by the way, these screenshots. I don't remember if they made an FSX version for this. But I'm wondering if these guys had anything to do with it. Because I'm just seeing little things that remind me of this group. And it's probably not. probably has nothing to do with it. But um, they did some really good work. They did really good work. And I just couldn't, I couldn't believe how impressed I was that they had given this away for free. So, um, you know, I just, I happen to think about this, these guys because I wonder, because this Demodi Dovo looks way too good for some first time group. Like these guys had to have come from somewhere. And so anyway, I happen to think of these guys, the lighting was all custom, everything. And so I just happen to think of these guys and wondering if maybe this is them with their first pay wear, or maybe some of these guys maybe be on the team. Anyway, I'm just trying to connect the dots in my head. So I happen to think of this. Let me see. Is there a link to the website that I got this from? Um, did I leave a link? Oh, here it is. Inner Sky Studio. Oh, yeah, it is for FSX, too. They do have... Oh, I have to download this for FSX. Dear sir, the senior was in development all free by two people for about one year, no holiday. So it's up to you if you decide to price donation. Oh, they do have a donation. Yeah, it's worth a donation. It's it's worth a donation. Inner Side Scooter, if you never heard of this product, get it and donate. So good stuff. All right, let me. And you know, and then I'm thinking about this guy too, since I'm at it. I mean, I'm looking at the quality and it's like, I keep thinking about this guy too because his work is just so good. And I'm like wondering, if he had anything to do with this um, Demodi Dovo. I'm just wondering, because this is kind of reminding me of him as well. He added all the housing blocks outside the airport. Um, you know, the quality was just so good, and so I just wonder if he had anything to do. But anyway, the guy who did this, he's, right now, he's working on, uh, what did I say it was a minute ago? Uh, St. Petersburg. So... But anyway, I'm just thinking about like some of these other Russian developers and wondering if they all came together or what. I'm just trying to connect dots in my head. Yekaterinburg is a great airport if you don't have it. you got to get this, man. It's awesome. I have a huge review on it. This is all taken in FS9. I think I wrote this back in uh, 2012 as well. But um, that one's definitely worth a look. And that's available from Aerosoft. Anyway, I just had to look at that real quick. All right. Um, let me kill the simulator now. Let's bring up Simarket, Demodi Dovo, MDesign Config, and let's go to Hardwinter. So we're going to upload and then save and exit. Okay. And then we're going to restart P3D, and we're going to take a look at those Hardwinter textures now. And while we do that, let me take a look. Any questions? Oh, you guys are going back and forth about the 777 there, it looks like. 
uh, the Peanut Butter 333. Welcome aboard. I don't think I've seen you uh, before, so welcome. He says, Dear ADX team, really impressed in your work. First time I'm joining your stream. What are we looking at tonight? Uh, well, this is our second look tonight. Uh, the first look was Shemir Tevo, Moscow Shemir Tevo, or Shemir Tevo, or I don't know how to pronounce it, by JV Tisky Design. And uh, right now we're looking at M Design Demodi Dovo. Um, so we're, it's all about Moscow tonight. <laughs> That's what we're all looking at. Um, so welcome aboard, Peanut Butter. I love Peanut Butter, by the way. Uh, and glad you found us. And thank you, Gombo, for the link as well. Appreciate it. Oh, thank you, Slayer. Slayer says that's called the Vortex Ring State on a heli. That's what I keep. Ha that's what keeps happening when I lose control, huh? And uh, yes, Triple Seven Flyer. Uh, the pictures of Copenhagen look awesome. They look absolutely awesome. So, and actually, Captain Gombo says actually Moscow is in Europe. So, okay, there you go. And Nathan says, wasn't J.B. Tisky supposed to do this airport? Not Demodi Dovo, just Shamir Tavo, Shamir Tavo, Shamir Tavo. Um, not Demodi Dovo. I don't think they ever announced that, which we've already looked at. But um, he says they planned Demodi Dovo as well. I didn't know that. I actually didn't know that. But um, okay, let's take a look at the winter textures now. Before my voice gives out, uh, uniform, uniform, delta, delta. There we go. And should I go back to my helicopter? Yeah, I don't want to slew around. I hate slewing. Uh, MD. Oh shoot, 902. Is it 902? Am I losing my head? I'm starting to have brain farts. <clears throat> there we go. And I guess midday is fine. Um, time and season we need to change. Let's go to, let's go reset the system time and let's back it up to uh, February. That should be fine. And 12 o'clock, 11, 10, that's fine. <clears throat> yep, that ought to do it. I think that's fine. Actually, Let's make things interesting. You know, there is still a bug in P3D. If I try to set my weather first, and by the way, Adi, I do have my, uh, where is it, by the way? Oh, it's in here. Or is it in here? Oh, no, it's down here. Um, I do, oh, wait, can you guys see? Oh, yeah. For those of you that don't have it yet, I'm still still setting mine up, but the Sim Launcher X, you can do a lot of the stuff in SimLauncher X, and actually, it's probably better if you use the SimLauncher X instead of using the prepared um, interface because um, there is still some bugs in the prepared V2 interface. Like, for example, if you try to set your weather, sometimes it defaults back. I don't know why, but for some reason, oh, update failed. I don't know why. Um, <clears throat> but for some reason, um, the SimLauncher seems to get around a lot of that stuff. So. If you don't have Sim Launcher X, get it on an AvSim. I really, it's compatible with both FSX and P3D, and I highly recommend it. This guy Martin Bolins has done just a remarkable job um, with with these um, products, and the interface is like insane. I mean, all the work that he went through um, to do this. I mean, it's it's an, it's incredible. I mean, he there's buttons and crap everywhere. There's so many options and you know adjustments and things you can make. So. Um, it's really cool, and this is what you use before you start the simulator. I have another product that I'm going to be reviewing soon that you can use while you're in the simulator, and that's called uh, Sim Control, and I'll be getting into that soon. That's an app on your iPad, so I'll be getting to that soon. But anyway, um, it just loads everything else here, all your stuff. So um, anyway, I recommend this that you use this. I'm not using Sim Launcher right now. Uh, because I'm still familiarizing myself with it, so I, I am not, I don't fully, uh, I'm still learning it. So it's a lot because it's come with so many more options um, than ever before. It's it's not even it's not even funny. So and you've got everything in here, all that good stuff, all the good toys. So anyway, I'm still I'm still familiarizing myself with it, but. Um, 
it's it's terrific. So that's the only reason why you don't see me doing it yet because a couple of people have said, "Hey, DeAndre, can you come on and um, you know go live with it and show it off?" And I'm still familiarizing myself with all the options because there are just so many options. It's not even funny. So anyway, that's that. If you guys haven't um, looked into that yet, it's like lots and lots and lots and lots of options and cool stuff in there and all that. So anyway, that's some Launcher X on Avsim, so be sure to look that up. Um, no. All right, goodbye. Okay. Anyway, so sometimes when I try to change the weather here, it doesn't go through. I'm going to try anyway and see. Um, I just want it to look wintry. Let's try to go with an overcast, 3,000, 15,000. That's fine. Uh, we don't need this cumulus of work. Okay, we'll see if it works. All right, let's do it. And E. Hoffin! Whoa! Hello, sir! It's our Air Daily X resident pilot tuning in from uh, da -da 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 the Kenai Peninsula up in Alaska. Welcome aboard, E. Hoffin. Great to see you. Um, Hoffin says, uh, FSX has the same bug when setting uh, custom WX. You need to recheck it. It goes back to default sometimes. Okay, so I definitely need to look at that. Oh, yeah. Mr. E.K. Hoffin, Captain Hoffin, as I call him, uh, just got a whole new setup with his uh, PC. So um, we're looking forward to it. Actually, uh, I'll send you an email after the uh, stream um, so we can work out what you were working on there. E.K. Hoffin in the house, tuning in from Alaska. Awesome. All right, let's go back to the simulator and check out these hard winter textures. So... As we can see, I just said I want full overcast, and I don't have a damn cloud in the sky, so fun. Okay, let me go into weather again, and let's just do it again. Sorry, your screen's going to go black for a second, or go blank, or black, or black, or blank, or whatever. And uh, let's see. Let's turn down the visibility a little bit, too, make it look cool. Let's take it down. You see some of those volumetric... Uh, uh, what do they call that stuff? Volumetric. There we go. That'll work. That looks nice. That looks winter-esque, I think. All right. So this particular variation is the hard winter. Hard winter, soft winter. I don't even know why they give a choice. I'm going to choose hard winter. <laughs> I wouldn't even choose the other winter. Let's just go straight hard winter. Let's winter this baby out. All right. Evan, e, Captain is loving that, uh, loving that new computer. It's fantastic. All right, here we go. First things first, take a look at some of these ground and ramp textures here. So the one thing someone pointed out that it would have been nice to sort of see, uh, is that plane still there? Yeah, he is. Uh, some volumetric grass would have probably make it, made it would have made it a little bit better. I think I definitely agree with that. We could have definitely gone with some volumetric grass there, or 3D grass that would have made it look cool. And it seems to blend in very perfect. Seems to, <laughs> seems, to, <laughs> seems to blend in. I talk too fast for my own good. I get too excited doing this crap. Uh, <clears throat> Seems to blend in seamlessly with uh, with Vector and uh, OpenLC, so wonderful. How's that performance counter? Still looking good. This is like a full cloud coverage here, so. The interesting thing is, I guess Shemiratyevo is closer to Moscow than Demodidovo is. And the reason why I say that is because... Why do I say that? Because you couldn't see the, uh, the, the city center buildings from here. We never saw them. But from the air other airport, we did see them. So I guess Demodi Dovo is a little bit further out away from the city. Out in the sticks. Very nice. 
Here you can see there's snow textures on the roof. I, I don't think in the, um, at the other airport there were snow textures on the roof. Wow, these guys really did uh, do their homework, didn't they? They actually added snow textures on the roof. Nicely done, lads. Very nicely done. I am really going to have to write a full ass on review on this one. Ooh, I'm getting kind of stuttery over here. That's probably uh, my volumetric, my volumetric uh, clouds doing that. What are these things on the roof? These brown things. I see there's a logo on it. What is that? What does that say? No, I guess I don't. Can't see what it says. I don't know if that's like air conditioning systems or what. I didn't know what that was. Excuse me. All right, let's go to a little bit of a higher elevation here, so we can try to take a look at what those hard winter textures look like. A little bit higher up. Getting a little stuttery. Frames are have dropped quite a bit, obviously, because of the volumetric fog that you can clearly see, plus the uh, heavy cloud uh, layers. So that does that is having a little bit of effect, especially given the fact that I'm live broadcasting, which the OBS software does take a little bit of a chunk of uh, my performance away. <clears throat> but uh, I'm really digging the way the snow textures, how they kind of flow on. Looks very nice. Very good. There's our train. We love that train, don't we? So yeah, getting some stutters here. Um, I don't think I'd be getting these stutters if, uh, if I wasn't broadcasting, though. So... The CPU does have to share its space. I mean, you guys know how hard it is to run these add-ons as it is, and then to to be doing the uh, the stream at the same time. Obviously, the jet line's like <laughs> so. Well, look at those trees. That windows winter textures are nice. Very lovely. loving those trees see here in Southern California we only have two seasons summer and not summer so as a result you don't really get <laughs> you don't really get to see this sort of thing of course lucky for us we have the nearby mountains but the only problem is lately I guess with global warming we really haven't been getting much uh, much snow anymore so I don't know if we're gonna get snow this year might have to come on up to Kenai, Alaska, and get some snow. I'm sure you guys might have a little bit for me. <laughs> Even some snow here on the parking lots, too. A lot of attention. They, they went on ahead and put snow on all the buildings, didn't they? They put these snow textures on all of them, not just the main te terminal. Even the small buildings. I mean, these guys really did go all out. I'm very impressed with this team. I am super impressed with this team. I did not expect the scenery to look this good. I'm really disappointed and kicking myself that I didn't look into this earlier because this has been out now for a couple of months. Or has it been about a month? A little over a month. I think a little over a month. But still though, oh my goodness, it is very nice. And do we have our snow textures on the hangar? Yes, we do. Yes, sir. So there we have it, lads. Um, not really sure what else to cover with this wonderful airport. I think we've given it quite a bit of time. What time is it? We started at 1230 and it's 343. So, <laughs> uh, quite a bit of broadcasting today. Wow, 
Wow, looks great. Looking very, very good. So I'm just trying to give you guys a little bit of a higher elevation so you can see those uh, snowy textures there. There she is. There is a current issue right now, though, with the Dalgon clouds. Again, I mean, when they when when Lockheed Martin uh, when Lockheed Martin released the latest version, um, there were some major issues with the clouds, and it was like you know everybody was having OOMs, and there was a temporary fix. But when they released the fix, which was essentially V two point four. There, it then uh, introduced another issue where now we're getting these flat layer clouds. So if you go into the Lockheed Martin uh, forum there, you can see that there's a number of complaints and concerns about it. And um, I guess, you know, it'll be introduced in the next update because I haven't seen an interim fix yet. So, but as of now, that seems to be the latest sort of issue. Um, that I think a lot of us have been pointing out with prepared so um, you know because I can see there's one straight ahead you guys probably don't you know see it but yeah there is uh, these like these 2d flat sort of uh, vertical clouds so I mean it's not an issue it doesn't seem to be perfect affecting performance at all but I think a lot of people are just annoyed with seeing them and certainly they do look dumb <laughs> So uh, I imagine sooner or later, hopefully sooner than later, we'll we'll get a, we'll get a uh, an update for that. So I don't know what else to say about this airport other than the fact that it's just a well done airport. It's 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 very impressive, and I'll be making sure to try to get my eye on this team uh, more thoroughly in the future. Unfortunately. They were only previewing their product on the Sim Russia forum, which is, in my opinion, is kind of stupid because um, I get that it's for Russia, but you know if you really want to get your product out there, you've got to kind of hit hit the masses too, um, <clears throat> because there's no way I'm going to log into a Sim Russian forum. There's no reason for me to, uh, and the only way that I found out was through uh, you know Air Daily X readers who said, hey, you you might want to take a look at this product or this project going on. But because it was posted on those forums, I don't think I took any screenshots or anything uh, uh, from that particular forum. I don't. Uh, Alexi and I, the guy who runs that forum, he and I don't get along too well. So he's he's not a very not a very polite or friendly person. And I've reached out to him in the past, and uh, he's been known to call me a monkey on his forums and all kinds of stuff. I don't think I've ever publicly slandered the guy, but um, he's just not a very friendly guy. He's Russian. And uh, he, he, in an email, basically said, yeah, well, I'm Russian. Like, I don't know what the hell that means. I've got friends who are Russian, and they're some of the best people I know. So you're not giving them a good name if, if that's what you're doing by saying that. So, but anyway, I, um, I, I didn't take any screenshots from that forum. But um, I'm certainly looking forward to finding ways to follow this team again in the future because I think with here with Demodi Dovo, they've done just such an excellent job. And... I figure a good way to leave off would be to uh, give it a nice little little sunset sayonara. All right, let me take a look at any last questions anyone may have here. Once again, thanks to everyone for coming aboard. Sorry for the blank screen. That'll disappear in a second. There we go. Leave it on a nice, uh, so you can see some of that night lighting there. All right, let's see. Anything else here? Uh, Ehoffen is saying, are the snow berms P3D? What, what do you mean? Sorry. Snow berms? What are we talking about? Sorry, I guess I don't know what that means. 
Oh, are you guys referring to, oh. No, I think that's part of, that's either part of the scenery or it's part of Open LC, isn't it? It's either part of the scenery or the, or the, or, or Open LC. I think it's part of the scenery, though. I see what you mean. Yeah, I think that's part of the scenery. Uh, let's see. Ooh. E. Hoffman says it's already 24 degrees there. Man, it finally started cooling off today. I think it was like only 75 or 76. And that's that's cooling off for us. So, um, man, summer just extended well into October. Last week we were still looking at temperatures of like 80, 90 degrees. And we live near the beach. That's just stupid, ridiculous. So, um, finally it looks like it's starting to cool, cool down a little bit. Um, Adi's taking off. Adi, thank you. Always great to have you on board. Uh, and Hoffman says, say Kenai. Oh, oh, instead of Kenai. Kenai. There we go. Kenai. The Kenai Peninsula. Thank you. Got to make sure I say it right. Um, Spart81 is asking, are there jet bridge animations? Let's take a look really quickly at the uh, documentation and find out. Hang on. Modidovo manual. Let's switch over here. Windows. And let's see. Hand place autogen realistic ground markings, custom texture, taxiways, runways, and apron. Highly realistic nighttime effects with custom 3D uh, runway and taxi lights, custom surroundings, including airport city. Uh, photorealistic textures on airport buildings, animated ground traffic, including Aero Express train, friendly FPS, and low vast usage, seasons, and configuration tool. Blah, 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 blah. And that's it. So, and their support forum is actually on the Sim Russia forum. So, my thing is, is if you really want to get your product out to the masses, you can't just be like on a Russian speaking only forum. You, you got to kind of come out of your, you know, I mean, and there are developers who um, they do do that, but then they also reach out to me because they want their product to be known to the world and the world is not logging into the Sim Russia forum. So that's just the only point that I'm making. Um, and that's what a lot of developers do, especially a lot of developers that don't speak English well. They actually come to me so that I can word things in English, you know, properly for them in terms of promoting their products and stuff. So with these guys, I've never heard of them. They've certainly done a, a, a splendid job. Uh, I hope that uh, I do hear from them in the future for their next project because I would certainly like to promote it a lot further than it already has been, obviously just through a Russian forum in some market. Um, and then alongside that, uh, what was I going to say? Uh... I forgot what I was going to say, but um, they've done an excellent job, and I really do look forward to promoting them again in the future, or, or at least promoting them a little bit more advanced and more ahead of time um, for future reference in terms of uh, any products that they, they, may, they may do. So, Okay, anything else? And Slayer brings up a good point. There's tons of good stuff on the RU side that we never see, but, you know, don't want to sift through it all. And that's true. And there's some really kick-ass freeware stuff. I've seen some great freeware stuff come out of there, but they just got to, gotta, they got to, you know, get out of the Russian-only thing because I think maybe they just assume because it's Russian, nobody's interested or nobody cares. And, you know, I, I, don't, I don't think that's true. Uh, I certainly have an interest, and in, I've never been to Russia, you know. Uh, in fact, my cousin, which I mentioned earlier in the stream, she's the only one in my family who's ever been to Russia. So um, besides that, that's pretty much it. Uh, so that doesn't mean that just because many of us have never been there that we wouldn't have an interest. So, And Air Daily X is a good way to get that out to the masses. So I just encourage them. If anyone knows them, you know, if they can you know, reach out to me, I'd be more than happy to try to help them you know, get the word out to a, to a larger audience than just uh, an audience that... Uh, you know, speaks Russian. So, um, other than that, it's been a long day. It's let me see. We've been here for for three and a half hours. Holy crap! And I know my stepson can't wait to get back on his computer and fire up the internet. So uh, <laughs> he's had to go without internet for three and a half hours, and he's probably upstairs just like choking himself. So, um, nevertheless, I think we have covered some serious ground today. Um, for those of you who had some issues with the stream earlier, these will be imported over to YouTube. And uh, 
I'll repost them on the uh, the Air Daily X news page as well. And then, of course, if anyone just missed these streams today, you'll be able to catch them later on uh, also. So definitely support these developers, this M Design. I, I find it hard to believe that they are a new development team. Uh, I just this, this just looks too good for a first timer. But if it is, then oh my God, they have stormed out of the gate running and they've done an incredible job at doing it. So um, yeah, definitely check out this product. Uh, it is on Sim Market, and uh, I can't think of anything else. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and sign off. T C Seven Flyer says, "Thank you so much for the stream. Hey, it is my pleasure, and glad to hear you had a great time. I don't know how entertaining I can try to make it. You know, obviously it's just me running my mouth talking to myself for you know three and a half hours. You know, how interesting can that be? But um, nevertheless, again, and I always want to point this out. The point of these streams is not to show off how good or how much I suck uh, <laughs> as a pilot. Um, you know, there are a lot of streams out there where people do that. They want to show off how good they are and, you know, they want to become celebrities and all that kind of crap. And, you know, that's not really so much what I'm trying to do. Uh, what I want to do is really focus on the products and uh, help you guys, you know, if you are relying on a, on a product page and you don't know if the product is any good or not and you want something a little bit more than a few screenshots and some verbiage, um, then you know that's what I'm hoping these streams do, so you can actually you know get more in depth with a product before you buy it. So that that's the whole point of it. So and then supporting the developers in the process. So you know I want to end the days of us buying stuff, and then we wind up and then we see that it's crap, and then we can't get a refund, or you're forced to go through your credit card company. A lot of people you know don't use credit cards. There was a guy saying earlier, I don't have a credit card. I live in the Netherlands. How can I get P3D? So. <clears throat> you know, uh, there there are no options for a lot of people, and I can tell you personally, even before I joined Air Daily X, and since I've been there, I have wasted money on stuff and felt really disappointed. And uh, those days need to come to an end when developers re you know produce garbage that should have been free or maybe not even you know released for free, and then you know you pay thirty bucks because you just you really really want that product so bad and you're waiting for so long and then you finally get it and then it's just full of bugs and then there's no customer support and there's no updates that's ever gonna come and you're just left holding the bag like wow there's thirty bucks I lost and what that does is is that that takes away confidence from the community and that hurts us because we're a niche community there's not that many products out there there's not that many developers when people find themselves skeptical like yeah I don't know if I should buy it or not what if you know what I mean? What if it sucks? You know, and I only have thirty bucks this month to spend on a product, and you got to choose between products and all this stuff. And then, so that's why I want to just kind of help you guys out, and hopefully keep you guys off the pirate websites and all that kind of stuff. So, anyway, had a lot of fun talking. You know, hearing myself talk. <laughs> But nevertheless, interacting with you guys. Sooner or later, I'm going to get that dog on uh, team speak up and going so you guys can come in and, and join the conversation. I really, the thing is, I really want to hear your opinions and you guys are writing them down. I just hate having to pause every time to read them. You know, it would be easier to kind of have some of you guys on and hearing your, your stuff. You know, we all love this, simu this, 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 uh, hobby so it would be great to interact with with those of you who love the hobby so there are a few guys that said i really would love to do it but english is like my third language and i suck at it and you know people aren't going to understand me and i totally understand if you're not uh uh, confident in doing it. Uh, don't worry, I get it. But um, soon, soon we'll get that team speak going because it's nice to have a panel of people and a panel of different uh, uh, opinions as opposed to just hearing mine. Because you know, you guys, you, for the most part, you guys agree. But there's cases where you guys may not agree. So it's nice to it's nice to hear people disagree with me um, because then that opens my eyes to things that I may not consider too. But anyway, um, uh, da 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 da. -da. So, yeah. Yeah, and like Rolio was saying, I'm personally not into Russian airports. Um, you know, it's funny. When it comes to Russian aircraft, I don't think I would fly on one, but I would definitely like to have one in the simulator. I know that's horrible for me to say that, but, um, yeah, the track record just, you know, I don't, I, uh, uh, uh. but I would really love to have one in the simulator and learn how to fly them because they are so vastly different from, you know, Western aircraft and stuff. So, but as far as um, the airports in Russia goes, over the last three and a half years, they've just grown on me with all the freewares and stuff that have been coming out. 
and um, so I've never been, but I like I like them, and I do fly in Russia. I fly in all parts of the world that I've never been. I've never been to Japan, but I love flying in Japan airports. So that's just another example. But anyway, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and sign off. Aurelia is asking, how many will I allow on the stream? Probably like a panel, maybe, you know, besides myself, maybe two or three other people, something like that. So that way people don't get too confused in terms of who's talking. But, um, you know, every, every stream we can have a different set of people. You know, there's always the usuals who show up. So between the usuals, you know, we can kind of bounce off back and forth. And, you know, I'm sure uh, Hoffman probably wouldn't mind jumping on and, you know, you know, chatting a bit and stuff too. So we will start getting into that as soon as I get TeamSpeak worked out. Um, so anyway, thanks so much, guys. I had a lot of fun. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the stream, enjoyed the products. And uh, I'll be looking into that stuff with – PMDG and pricing that was mentioned and all that stuff and then uh, get an update on the news page. So again, airdailyx.net. Be sure to check it out daily because I do try to make sure that I keep everything up to date on a daily basis. Uh, I know how much you guys, you know, you're, you're like addicts for flight simulation news and you got to have it. So I try to do my best to keep it as up to date as, as much as possible. So, again, thank you so much for all of your support. And um, we'll see you guys all for the next stream. Everyone enjoy the rest of your Sunday, whatever's left of it for many of you. And uh, we'll see you back on Monday. All right. Take care of everyone.